Good morning guys, not even crack of dawn yet. And I'm getting ready for a little ride on the Royal Enfield Himalayan. Oh man, there's nobody waiting. I'm just gonna cross the red light. I hope I don't get busted. Well, let's get going. See, if I waited for that red light, or the green light, then I would catch this one red. And that would suck. So let's see if I can catch this one green. Yeah, oh, I only got a red one. Oh well, as I was saying, I've been really enjoying the Royal Enfield Himalayan 400cc single stroke engine. This is a very fun and very easy bike to ride. It is a cool bike for beginners. It is very low to the ground. You can reach the floor very, very easily. The throttle response is very moderate because this isn't a very powerful bike. It only has 24.5 horsepower, but it is torquey. Check this out. And it is not very maneuverable and fun to ride. This whole retroish look does translate into the riding in a very cool way, not in a clunky old clunker way, but it is very fun. One thing you have to get used to, and this is if you come from other bigger bikes, is the front brake is very, very progressive. And if you need to brake hard, you need to press it hard. Now, this isn't a bad thing necessarily, because if you are a beginner, or if you don't have a whole lot of experience off-road, this can make it very easy to control the front wheel braking, which is the primary type of braking you need to do off-road. Other than that, look, I'm in love with this dashboard. This is just glorious. Speedometer, rev counter, fuel gauge, electronic compass. And then a whole lot of things here. Temperature, odometer, trip A, trip B, clock. I mean, I don't know what else you could ask for. Range maybe, but this is a $5,000 bike, so you're not gonna expect an onboard computer, are you? So this is really, really cool. I wish my CRF250 rally had something like this. Although I do like the dashboard on the rally, I just don't get as much information like temperature, which I think is really useful when you start feeling cold or warm and you have no idea why. Well, I like to know what the temperature is. I don't know, psychological, but I still like it. This corner is beautifully, look at this. Gorgeous. Hi right, guys, back on my little baby. Oh wow, what a difference. Well, I've done enough mods on my bike so that it fits my body perfectly now. So that's a huge difference between, you know, the Royal Enfield Himalayan and this one. Muito mais espaço. Mas pronto, ela está modificada para mim, né? Mas tu também ficas com o joelho fora da cena do depósito, que é que não faz lógica nenhuma, meu. É mesmo mau design, meu. Eu joguei que era só de eu ser grande, mas não. Pois são pequenitos. Bora. Yeah, power delivery is in very, very different than this bike. But again, I have modded this with an FMF power core exhaust, and I also lowered a tooth and the front sprocket, so of course this is going to be torque here in a certain range, but uh, in the low range that, that, you know, the Royal Enfield has the upper hand. Getting out of Lisbon. So the reason we got together with these two bikes, it's because although they're very different concepts, they're actually made for the same purpose, for adventure. And, uh, you know, it's easy to see that this one is a little bit more off-road oriented and uh, the Royal Enfield does both, but uh, it's definitely not as off-road oriented as this one. 
maybe uh, I think you can say the Royal Enfield is a little bit more competent on the road, although this bike is a joy to ride on the road as well. And that's why I love it so much is this, you know, combination of being able to do both things with the same bike at a light weight, you know, at a low price. So everything seems to be a bonus. Compromises freeway speed, but it isn't that different from the Royal Enfield anyway, so. Schkap my schrok. <laughs> he had a, a sticker from his blog and that that traffic sign there. Pretty cool. Good morning guys, looks like our plan to catch the sunrise didn't go so well. É destas coisas de motociclismo e de motociclista, queríamos apanhar o nascer do sol aqui no cabeça de Montarchic, mas uh, logo mesmo a hora do nascer do sol uh, apareceu um pouco de chuva e tivemos que parar aqui, mas vamos continuar a nossa viagem. Até já! The road is still very wet, the rain is still falling, but uh, we're not giving up. I've actually never been here, and I'm, I'm from Lisbon, so I'm assuming a lot of Lisbon folks have never been here either. This is called Cabis Montachic, and it's supposed to be, you know, one of the best views in the outskirts of Lisbon. And, uh, wow, well, the weather can be cooperating a bit more with us now. Uh, a little exercise in the morning, just to get the blood flowing. Ok, portanto então, estamos, estamos no cabeça de Montachique, um, é quase um semi-secret spot de Lisboa, portanto não digo a ninguém, ok? <risos> Senão deixa de ser semi, uh, <risos> secret. Para o norte temos toda a morfologia típica aqui do oeste, o socorro está já aqui à nossa frente e muito junto estará lá mais ao fundo, não se vê por causa do, do mau tempo. Para o leste temos todo o Val do Tejo, digamos assim, veríamos a ponte vasta da gama uh, ao fundo se tivesse um dia claro, para sul vê-se claramente a Rábida, também neste momento não se consegue ver nada porque o dia está de facto cinzento, uh, e para o oeste a Serra de Sintra lá ao fundo que não sei se conseguem ver, e este é um local fantástico para início de dia, fim de dia, para fotografar, está sempre um pouco de vento, está sempre mais frio, estamos a cerca de 400 metros de altitude, parecendo que não nota-se sempre diferença em relação ao clima de Lisboa. anos Portugal viveu um momento de altíssima tensão. O Império Português estava sob a pressão do Império Francês e foi invadido não uma, não duas, mas sim três vezes pelos exércitos napoleónicos. Wellington veio até Portugal, comandou as tropas e criou uma estratégia. A estratégia era defender Lisboa e o Val do Tejo. Hoje o confronto é outro. Temos uma onda, uma onda CRF 250 Rally. A onda, como todos sabem, dominou o mercado português há vários anos. E temos a invasora. A invasora, uma das bandeiras, digamos assim, da invasão indiana, é esta Royal Enfield Himalayan. Duas motas que aparentemente não têm muito em comum, mas fomos ver à lupa, são bastante mais idênticas do que imaginamos. E é este o confronto de hoje, é hoje o confronto que vamos ter aqui nesta região, na região das linhas de torres. And this is where the rally shines. Off-road capability. Wow, how cool! This is simply awesome! How cool is this? Inside of an old ruin with my CRF 250 Rally. guys what's stopping you from coming and having a little adventure 
Doesn't matter which bike you have. Just go for it. Hit the road and surge. Oh, my knobby tires are slipping. Even with the APAS. <laughs> yeah, man, knobby tires on the rain. You gotta watch out. And you better be aware of that. Otherwise, you pay for it dearly. Wow, really cool road. The really big difference between these two bikes is really off-road handling. The Rally is really exceptional off-road. I mean, it is my favorite off-road bike at the moment. You can handle any kind of conditions without any trouble. The Royal Enfield, it still does great. Even if you're not that experienced, I think that bike will take you wherever you want to go. It will tackle whatever obstacle you dare try tackling. And uh, that's what I call an adventure bike, you know? It's you feeling comfortable to go anywhere without compromise. And these two bikes are true adventure bikes. You can venture out on your own and you don't have 250 kilos to deal with. You're a lot safer. And man, you're having fun because that's what I feel about these two bikes. They're like super, super fun to ride. And very competent as you can see. What I've been telling my friends about riding small bikes like this. This is true adventure. Wherever you get to, you feel confident enough to tackle the obstacles and just keep having fun. Eu estou a adorar. Fizemos agora cerca de uma dúzia de quilómetros fora de estrada. E esta parte final, 500 metros, bastante trilheira. É tão fácil que até, que até, pronto, enfim, é extraordinariamente fácil e dá prazer, a moto dá prazer. Estamos mesmo no coração uh, do sistema defensivo das linhas de torre. Lá ao fundo, bem ao fundo, o cabeça de montar aqui. Já em segundo plano temos a Serra do Socorro. Nós estamos aqui no outro ponto da Serra da Feiteira e agora o Red Raven vai fazer 180 graus e vai-vos mostrar o monte junto. There you go. Wow, look at that view. A Serra do Socorro foi um ponto-chave nas linhas de torres e na defesa do Império Português no século XIX. E foi aqui que o Wellington muitas vezes fez o seu quartel general à noite. E é aqui que se dá a batalha, digamos assim, o confronto entre a onda CRF Rally e a Royal Enfield Himalayan. Temos aqui uma moto com um motor monocilíndrico, cerca de 25 cavalos, um monocilíndrico refrigerado a líquido. Temos uma ciclística evoluída, uma dupla de trave, temos também uma gente 21 à frente. E é uma moto bastante leve, bastante ágil, bastante dinâmica. Por outro lado, temos uma Royal Anfield mais conservadora, digamos assim. A invasora é a Royal Anfield, também tem gente 21 à frente, mas tem uma ciclística muito conservadora, um, um, um berço, um duplo berço, um motor refrigerado a ar e, enfim, todo este aspecto mais reto. Dois aspectos absolutamente cruciais neste confronto. A Honda CRF tem um depósito de 10 litros e custa cerca de 6.100 euros. Por sua vez, a Royal Enfield é muito mais barata. 4.700 euros e também a autonomia, porque o seu depósito tem 15 litros. Ambas gastam cerca de 3 litros aos 100. Ok, guys, so now it's my turn to venture on this bike off-road. Wow, look at this view, guys. And I think, you know, to be honest, you know, the, the kind of user I see for this bike is probably not worrying about riding off-road, standing up, trying to get performance out of it. He's gotta be worrying about, you know, overcoming obstacles, just being able to get to where he wants to. This is a full-on adventure bike, and it will take you anywhere. You know, just not as sporty behavior as the Rally, because the Rally, 
almost lets you ride it like a, an enduro bike, you know? Uh, it is not an enduro bike, guys, and that's why a lot of people are making, you know, confusions about thinking the bike is underpowered and stuff. It is not an enduro bike, and you cannot do what you can do with a rally on an enduro bike. You cannot cross the country on tarmac on an enduro bike. Your ass will kill you for that, I assure you. But, uh, I mean, both bikes are really cool adventure bikes, and it really depends how focused you are on off-road. You know, look at this. This is even more stable than I was expecting. And I'm just sitting down, just trying to avoid the ruts. You know, they got a little sharp corner and there's some soft spots. And this thing doesn't flinch, you know. This 21-inch wheel with a 17-inch in the rear, it, it seems to be a really cool combination, you know. Look at this. This is just like, I'm cruising here. And you know, I'm not going that much slower than I did with the rally, yeah, I could do it faster with the rally than before, but and maybe I'll do just a turn just to show it off. But I'm not equipped, so that's not the point. And that's if you're doing adventure riding with not a big focus on off-road, you're probably not going to be fully geared because it's not that comfortable. But uh, this bike, look, it's super competent. And I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, if you find a really, really hard obstacle, he might get in trouble. But he would with the rally too, probably. This thing will just go over anything ruts, jumps, it's just fucking going, look at this, it's just like going. And here it is, baby rally. Well guys, I love both bikes. I think they're both gorgeous. One looks a little retro-ish, the other one looks like Dakar racing-like. And you know, if I was more of a city rider, I'd probably go for the Royal Enfield, but I'm not. I live in the countryside and I love doing off-road, so my choice goes to the rally. But I do love both of these girls. Okay guys, so hopping on to the rally. Uh, I'm actually gonna turn off ABS for this one. I'm not fully equipped, so I'm gonna take it easy. But, you know, the rally does give us a little bit more freedom off-road, so let's see how this goes. See, that's the thing. The Royal Enfield is not meant to do stuff like this, you know? It is a bike for you to cruise. And the thing that I dig about the rally is that, you know, besides the cruising capabilities, if you put an aftermarket seat, it becomes really comfortable. The original seat, that's not too bad for short stints, but, uh, you know. So as you see, I mean, even without warning, I'm talking on camera, I'm not really focused on the riding. I'm already doing more aggressive riding than I was. This is down to preference. Of course now, I can stand up, you know, and play the holy gun here. But that's, that's the whole point, you man. That's why you would choose this bike, if you like doing this kind of stuff and this kind of riding. If you just want to cruise up this hill, then of course, <laughs> the Royal Enfield is more than capable, you know? See, I'm not doing this corner that much faster. Am I having more fun? <laughs> yeah, I'm tail sliding a bit and all, and I shouldn't because I'm not equipped. But yeah, man, this is a more competent off-road bike. But in a sporty way, it's not bringing me, you know, anywhere that I can go with a Royal Enfield. Maybe in very extreme conditions, like, you know, I don't know, sand or who knows. I mean, I haven't tried the Royal Enfield on sand. And to be honest, I don't know if I want to. But again, it's not an extreme off-road bike. And neither is this one. They're both traveling bikes. This one just has a better focus on off-road. And yeah, if you like doing this kind of riding, then yeah. And of course, you're better, you're better suited with this one. So there you go, man. Two very similar bikes. They did exactly the same thing. Did I have more fun on this one? Well, yeah, it's got a more sporty behavior. It's more to my taste. But if that's not you, then this bike could actually be a better choice for you. On Tarmac, I do think it's a different story. The Himalayan does have the upper hand in terms of handling. But the Rally doesn't fall that far behind. On off-road, though, I think the gap is much bigger in favor of the route. As I look for a better 
doesn't seem to be optimal on the Himalayan but I think that's something you can improve by changing the handlebar or just raising it I mean on this rally I've changed the handlebar and I raised it and I pushed it forward and that's why I got such an amazing standing position I also lowered the foot pegs so yeah this bike is now made for my body to have as best ergonomics as I can and uh, I guess you could Try and do the same thing to the Himalayan. Foram nove horas de uma intensa batalha, de um duro confronto. Começámos antes do sol nascer e as marcas de confronto estão bem presentes nos exércitos. Tal como no episódio da história de Portugal das invasões napoleónicas, também aqui a potência dominante vence. Vence, mas vence por muito pouco. E se calhar, num outro tipo de terreno, teríamos que encontrar um outro vencedor. Well guys, what a fun day, what a fun couple of bikes. I really love both bikes and I really don't think there is a clear winner here. If you're more of a city rider and you ride more on tarmac, then maybe the Himalayan might be a good choice for you. But if you're like me, you live in the countryside and you love doing off-road, then the CRF 250 Rally is definitely a clear winner. So they're both winners depending on what you want to use your bikes for. I hope you guys enjoy the show. Stay tuned, because I'll be coming with another adventure pretty soon. As I look 